Good morning. Marcus Conti reporting. It's 50 degrees <laughs> and sunny on this beautiful December. Excuse me. Yeah, December. Still December. Morning in New York City. So I want to do a couple of things today. Mostly muse, but I got this... Uh, this amazing uh, diagram, like some people sit around and draw pictures, you know. <laughs> I draw, I draw a world, world view, <laughs> in 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 flow charts. <laughs> I'll show it to you in a second. Start off with a story though, so that's pretty funny. It's a real story. So I'm in the, I went to the uh, bank yesterday, right? Because I don't, I don't keep the little money I have. As it comes in, I take it out and I keep it in my pocket. All my money is in my pocket right now. <laughs> right? That's how I live. Right? I don't. I don't trust banks. Right? So I'm in the bank. Right? And to get your money out. Right? To take your money out of the bank, out of a checking account. Right? You have. You you have to fill out a uh, withdrawal slip. Right? Right. But and, and so when you go up, you know, when you go up to the little counter with the pens and you you pull pull out the slip you need to fill out and then go up to the teller. Right? At the bank that I go to, right, they don't put the withdrawal slips in there. You have to go up to the teller and ask them for one. Right? They inconvenience you. You want you, you want your money? You mean you, ah, you want your money? Oh shit! You got to go up to the teller and, and get a, a special piece of paper, right? So, so I do that, and I'm filling it out, right? And then this other kid comes along, this little fat chubby guy, teller guy, comes along, and he says, he says, does anybody need a withdrawal slip? <laughs> While you're standing online, right? You're already online. So I tell him, I say, yo, why don't you put that pile of fucking withdrawal slips on the table so people don't have to go in, go up to the counter and ask you for one, Right? Those fighting words for the fucking guy in the bank, right? So he says, he says, well, that's not the bank's policy. You'll have to, we, we don't put them out because you have to sign in front of the teller. You have to sign in front of the teller. Now, that's a lie, right? So I said, I said, you're fucking lying to me. That's, that's bullshit. Don't bullshit me. You don't need to sign in front of the teller. I signed mine already, see? I'm going to walk up to the teller and I'm going to get my money with my ID. And he says, well, that, that's what the bank tells us to do. I say, oh, so you're lying on behalf of the bank. He said, no, no, no. That's what the, I, so I said, so I interrupted him. I said, I said, so if the bank, you work for the bank, if the bank told you to take those pieces of paper and hold them between your ass cheeks and skip across the floor, would you do it? Because after all, it's your job. <laughs> Uh, and I, I'm loud too. I'm saying it loud. Uh, the fucking guy, the guy fucking cr he crumbled. He crumbled. He said, "You have a wonderful holiday, sir. I hope you can have a wonderful holiday." That's what he kept saying. I said, "I'm having a great holiday, man. I, I fucking you know, I'm having a good time. How about you? Right? It, it's just what's the moral of the story? That guy will do anything for his fucking job, right?" And that's that's part of the problem, right? That's that's the problem we're having. You know what I'm saying? So, so let me get to this flow chart. How you doing? How you, doing? you work here? No, no. Are you I'm, just taking pictures of me without my yeah. consent? Yeah. What's that? Yeah, without my consent. You just walking around doing whatever you want. You taking pictures of me without asking me anything? Taking your picture. Yeah. I'm, I'm I wasn't taking your picture. You see, it's a selfie. Now you're in there the picture. Are. Who are you? Uh, I'm a journalist. I'm doing oh, a report. Shit, don't do that. No, no, no. I'm a, <laughs> uh, look. No, no. Come here. T talk to me. Talk to me. So, so uh, my name is Marcus Conti. I'm a, I'm a journalist. YouTube. And uh, you, you work for the city, right? You work for the city. I can't talk. Oh. All right. So let me, let me do my report, and we'll talk. I, I'll tell you. I'll tell you in a second. I'm just doing my report. This is what I do. I'm out here every day. I say good morning to you every day. So I'm gonna I gotta continue and then I'm gonna talk, right? So 
<laughs> so that's interesting. That is a city worker. He uh, he's a little upset that I'm in his park. It's his park. I didn't ask him permission. It's fucking totalitarian shit, right? So, so here's a flow chart. I want to talk about this. This is quite uh, quite interesting, right? And I'm going to explain it. You see up at the top, right? This is the one percent, right? Now, you see on the top, the very, very top, it's a flow chart, power flows down, right? So at the top, you have the global elite. See global elite? And you have the Federal Reserve. That's who's calling, ultimately calling the shots. Below them are the banks. Wells Fargo, you've got uh, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase, Citigroup, Morgan Stanley, uh, and uh, B of A, that's uh, Bank of America, right? So that's the big six banks, the global elites, right? Foreign entities, right? Foreign elites, and the Federal Reserve calling the shots. Now, arguably, the banks don't really take direction from anybody. But in this case, we'll just say it because the, the relationship between the banks and the Federal Reserve is actually very gray, and they kind of co-sign each other's bullshit, right? Below them is the 10,000 publicly traded companies on the, you know, New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, right? You getting all this? <laughs> and they basically, that's basically part of the 1%. Now, again, power flows down. What did that used to be? That's the highest level of power. Beneath it is judicial, executive, and legislative. Judicial being the courts, the judges, executive being the president. FBI, CIA, NSA, legislative is all the judges in the courts, right? And that collectively com comprises the 1% ruling class. And down below that is us, the 99%, the people, right? Now, that's the power structure. What was, once upon a time, this used to be what? It used to be the Constitution, the United States Constitution for the people, right? The power would flow down to the judicial, executive, and legislative, and they would interpret the, the, the almighty, powerful United States Constitution, right? But that has since been replaced by a ruling class, an oligarchy, a monopoly, a ruling 1%, right? And as you can see, no one bank is in charge. They're all competing for market share. They're, they're in direct competition with each other, but they're also above, in many respects, they're above the publicly traded companies because they handle the money. They also handle a lot of the float, the outstanding shares or the shares that are, are bought in, in, um, in, in block, block, block uh, possession of the shares of these publicly traded companies the banks own. So banks fully in charge, right? And when you go down here, you see also that there's, there used to be a separation of power. But now you see that the power just flows. It flows sideways, up and down, right? Right? The money, the money hits all three equally. It hits the executive branch, right? FBI, CIA, NSA. It hits the judicial, all of the, the, the Congress and the Senate all taking the money from the corporations, right? The legislative, right? The judges all taking money. Who gives them the most money, right? It's all about the money, right? The money flows down and then it flows sideways and corrupts this whole system, which leads, it's, that's what creates the, the, uh, the sense of, of uh, schizophrenia in the country because also... Also know that the corporate media is up here somewhere. The corporate media is actually above judicial and all this other stuff. Now, here's the other thing, right? Based on all of this, isn't it safe to say that this is the swamp? But why do people refer to the FBI, CIA, and NSA as the swamp, right? Because it's obviously you could see the who has more power who is actually calling the shots? Now, FBI, CIA, NSA is in fact part of the, 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 the corrupt entity and is in fact influencing, using the law 
to influence the people above it, the people below it, and the people side to side, right? The congressmen, the judges, FBI will investigate politicians. FBI, CIA, NSA never investigates the corporate elite because that's who's paying them. They're the boss. You follow? See, that's why when you criticize these guys, these guys come after you, right? And these guys never criticize these guys. I've shown you 10 examples, I mean three this week, where Wells Fargo, you know, took advantage of of uh, three, three and a half million people in the country, right? Three and a half million people in the country by uh, f fraudulent accounts. I showed you where, um, what else did I show you? I forgot, <laughs> but but there were a couple of examples this week. Watch the videos, and you'll find you'll see them. So, and all the way down at the bottom, we the people, right? See, also in the past, at the bottom used to be the corporate elite, the globalists. They used to be at the bottom. And they would have to go to the legislative and the judicial, right, and everybody else to get to get their voices heard. Now they are the voice. You see how the how the paradigm has shifted. I mean that chart. If you should you should have a look at it and study it. I want to get away from this guy because he's getting a little nuts over here. He thinks I'm filming him. <laughs> ah, it's just life in the city, you know what I mean? I'll go talk to him after this is over. With. So he thinks he's being filmed because he's probably, he's under surveillance, I bet. He feels like he's under surveillance. So what else? So, so that's, that's, the, that's the power structure. Very important to understand. And I, and I find that I, I was reading the comments in the, the Sanders v. Trump thread. And I do find it fascinating, I'll be honest with you. I find it fascinating that the the uh, set of things that Sanders represents, which is raise the minimum wage, uh, college tuition free at city and state universities, single payer, Medicare for all, get money out of politics, lower the military spending, raise the corporate tax rate, jail the bankers, right? All of those things that he's talking about in comparison to Trump, who's really not talking about anything. I think that if Trump, I think that if Sanders and, and um, Sterling Price, you pointed it out, right, in the comments, that Sanders needs to, he needs to correct himself on immigration. He needs to evolve on, on his immigration policy and this open border shit. But I do find it, I, just overall, I found it fascinating that people will continue to de continue to defend a, a a current administration that is clearly not working and is working on behalf of their own interest right in fact they these this administration refuses to identify the swamp that I just identified for you that we've known all along through the Occupy Wall Street movement through the Sanders, the rising up, the education, right? And now, right? Where we're at a virtual collapse. Right? I, I just find it fascinating and I hope that people will continue to to, to uh, evaluate that and, and try to understand their own uh, anger with supporting people that support the policies that are for the American people, right? Now, of course, Sanders did sell out. I, I, I'm one of the people that gave, you know, a couple of hundred dollars of money I didn't even have to the Sanders campaign and felt deeply betrayed and deeply hurt and deeply violated, right? No doubt. And that would be some of the things that Sanders would have to address. I believe he was made an offer he couldn't refuse. 
Uh, you know, that's just my opinion. But nonetheless, we're not we're not perfect human beings. I'm certainly not perfect. Anybody watching this who thinks they're perfect, then I guess you're not perfect. Right? But the policies that Sanders stood for are still valid and part of my platform if you read it down in the box. So you could hate me for for wanting those things. That's fine. I'm okay with that. You can unsubscribe anytime if you want. So, I mean, the only other thing in the news right now is fascinating is that the January 1st, the minimum wage will get bumped up. You remember? The big fight for 15 and the raising the minimum wage across the country. Some states got it, some didn't. So some people are going to get a whole dollar fifty, dollar, one big dollar or two dollar raise in their minimum wage, right? Because that's all that there is now, right? Everybody works for the minimum wage, right? 90% of the country is working for corporations that pay minimum wage, retailers, all this shit, right? I don't know the actual statistics, but meanwhile, if you look at, uh, I saw an article in the New York Post, the uh, chief executive and the chief content editor at Netflix both got $31.5 million this year. That's their pay. Right? So two guys get $31.5 million each in cash and stock equity. And you get an extra dollar in your, in your uh, dollar an hour. Does it sound right? Right? Does it sound right? The guys who are running the show are paying themselves $35 million a year. $31.5 million a year. Right? And they're all, half of them are billionaires now. They're all, all fucking billionaires. All the bank CEOs are billionaires. Also in news, today is the seventh consecutive week of the, the, the yellow vest movement in France. They're out in the street right now, moving around. What's going on in America? Same old, same old, right? Still thinking, still, still waiting for the, still waiting for the, for, to get everybody to get locked up, right? <laughs> the courts. The courts that don't work anymore are going are gonna to publish 60,000 sealed indictments on themselves. <laughs> I mean, it, you, just, you, have to, you have to think just how ridiculous that is, right? Just how ridiculous that is. Now, I've, now that I've shown you the power structure, right? right you see it. You see how the power flows down from the money. The money is the head of the snake. The money is the swamp. The money is the target. Don't take your mind, don't take your eye off the ball. Right? That's the swamp, right? The money. Right? So, you know, election season, I again, I don't put much stake. I, I saw somebody comment, oh, you, 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 it's cute to see how how much you believe in the system. It's like, fucking, you haven't been paying attention. I don't believe in the system. I don't believe in the system one bit. I think that the system needs to be burned to the ground. Totally. And start over with, you know, I integral people, redistribution of the, uh, the millions and billions that this country generates. And that's a bad word, redistribution. It's taking it out of the hands of an oligarchy taking it away from the monopoly, right? That is the American way, right? Capitalism tops out. It becomes monopoly oligarchy. At some point, you have to reset it. That's all it is, right? It's not the end of the world, right? No, one, no, one's, no one's saying go back to some fictitious version of um, communism, socialism, popul populist, Populist, you're a populist, you're a socialist. Right? What we're saying is, is, a, is an economic reset. And they can either surrender, they can either get out of the way, or we can put on our yellow vests and come and get them. The choice is ours. 
Marcus Conti reporting.